today look like every other day? And is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? You know, many of us get wrapped up in the mundane of our daily lives. And so much so that our goals, our dreams, and our desires are either taking a back seat or they're completely forgotten. And so it is in this ball of the mundane that we need to start to unravel so that we can no longer accept the mediocrity that our lives have become. And instead, when we don't pursue mediocrity, we can actually start to pursue excellence. And isn't that truly what life's all about? Pursuing the most that we can become. And so today, my guest is going to share his story and his phenomenal work that he's doing in transforming men's lives, helping them unravel the mundane that they currently live in. And before we get into that, we all know that being a man today has never been more challenging. And so this pain is real for us. It's a pain of loneliness and of worthiness, and it's masked by our anger and our resentment. And it's all because we are uncertain and afraid to take that next step. So if you're tired and fed up of where you're at, then I'm going to encourage you to start your hero's quest where you can become more, accomplish more, and live more than ever before. Just go to members.vnet and start your quest today. And with that, let's get on with today's episode. The average man today is sleepwalking through life. Many never reaching their true potential let alone ever crossing the finish line to living a purposeful life. Yet, the hunger still exists, albeit buried amidst his cluttered mind, misguided beliefs, and values that no longer serve him. It's time to align yourself for greatness. It's time to become a revolutionary man. Stay strong, my brother. Welcome, everyone, to the Revolutionary Man podcast. I'm the founder of the Awakened Man Movement and your host, Alan DeMonso. Let me start by asking you a couple of questions. Do you have a circle of men that you can lean on? And if so, great and congratulations. But if not, why not? You know, I think for many men, we struggle with this idea that we need to be, be this lone wolf and figure things out on ourselves. We have this fear and complacency within us to reach out and ask for help, whether we think that that's something that's going to be make us feel weak or be, or be shameful of it. But the truth of the matter is, is that when we choose to lean into the things that are hurting us, the things that are holding us back, that what we find is that what resides inside of us is much greater than anything that we can ever be faced against. And so today I have a guest who is teaching men how to unravel their lives or actually get their lives put back together if they may be unraveling, however you want to look at that. So allow me to introduce my guest today. Mark has been married, Mark Jordan, that is, has been married to his wife for over 35 years, and they have two daughters and two wonderful son-in-laws. And Mark is the author of several books, and he's been also started a couple of companies and started a couple of churches as well. But he realized that after a successful in career in investment banking that he wanted to do more with his life. And so he founded Unravel Groups. And Unravel is focused specifically on leading men to transforming and progressing their lives and all aspects in every way that they show up. And so Mark's really passionate about mentoring men and discovering better ways for them to reorient their lives. So welcome to the show today, Mark. How are things, my friend? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, great. And I'm just really excited to be here with you today and to, to chat about men and, and their future and how we can all grow and move the ball down the field. Yeah, absolutely, my friend. There's so many, there's so many different ways that uh, men's groups uh, have come about, and we're going to get into that today a little bit later. But my opening question to all my guests as they come here is: We talk a lot here at the Awakened Man about every one of us being on our own hero's quest or our own journey. And so, when you're, when I want you to think about your life, tell us about a time when you knew that things just had to change. You know, what did you do about that, and how has that ex experience shaped you into the man you are and the work that you're doing? Interesting question. Yeah, you know, it's 61. I can tell you I've had a lot of experiences like that in my life. So it's, a, it's more of a question of, you know, which one to pick. Yeah, I'd say pr probably the thing that jumps out for me right now or, or that's probably worth highlighting is back in 2009, I was playing racquetball one day, which I loved to play and along with a lot of other sports and went for a shot. And next thing you know, my back was in excruciating pain and pretty much in bed for three days. That is that that kind of sent me on a journey that I'm still going on. Will be on likely for the rest of my life of 24/7 of pain. It's never stopped. I've had three back surgeries, a couple fusions, 
And, you know, the, the, it's a journey that's just uh, likely going to continue on. And, you know, what, what I've learned from that has been so much. And would I like for that to be gone? Of course. You know, I'm certainly not looking to continue it. That having been said, since it's likely not going away, I can tell you I'm grateful for it at this point in my life. And that's a that's a recent evolution for me. Certainly for the you know, the vast majority of the time to that point, it's been, of course, all the standard things you think about. I can't do this anymore. That's not fair. Why can't I do that? You know, the pain's awful, et cetera, et cetera. And all those are, are certainly valid feelings and certainly things that, you know, I, I've grappled with and but I look back on that now, it, 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 the journey I'm on and have been on to this point in that regard, I'll call it the journey of pain. And we all experience pain in our life in lots of different ways. You know, and I've had it in my life in other ways, it just as happens to be one area. And a couple of things that ha have really changed me through this experience. The first one I would say is grace. Now, and prior to this, prior to this 2009 beginning of this journey, you know, I, I didn't certainly didn't have as much grace and understanding for people that struggled with struggle with challenges of life, let's just say they come in all different flavors, but I just didn't have compassion, you know, the, to the level that I that I feel like I should have. And man, this changes you quickly because you start realizing, wow, you know, I'm just a tiny step away from being in the same boat that a lot of other people are. And by the way, I'm a tiny step away from being in bed every day. And so it, it really caused me to have just a greater degree of grace and compassion for people who are struggling, even struggling in areas that I don't understand that don't make sense to me. And I'd say the second big thing that came out of it is time. You know, I took a lot, all that time that I was spending, which was great. And I, again, I, I would wish I had it back, but all the time I was spending in sports and activities and redirected that into, you know, things that are eternal building endeavors and initiatives and just getting involved in areas that maybe I wouldn't have previously or certainly maybe not to the degree. So there's been so much good that's come out of that and changed me and continues to build my character. Yeah, isn't it so true, right? We truly are forged in the fire of our challenges, are we not? And I think, you know, you mentioned oh, yeah. two big words there. You talked about grace and you talked about compassion and I want to thank you for also saying, you know, recognizing that the pain is still there, that that, that part of your life and in, for you will probably be there for the rest of the rest of your days, but the learning from it. And so because those words are so big, especially the word grace, I'd like to spend a little bit more time really talking about what, what does grace look, feel like for you today and how we can maybe help other guys understand exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, I think it first starts with just changing, growing your inner vocabulary. I, mean, I think that's the first step. You know, it's easy to say, have more grace or have more patience. Patience has certainly been a, a lifelong struggle of mine as well. It, it starts with inner vocabulary, right? And learning new tools and new ways to interact with yourself in the moment, which that requires, of course, a degree of self-awareness. I love Henry Cloud's definition of integrity, the courage, to meet the demands of reality. So we got to live in reality first. That's okay. I'm more self-aware when I'm not experiencing grace or when I'm not showing grace toward other people, whether it be just in my own uh, thinking or whether it be overtly toward them. Then it's developing new vocabulary and new tools to equip myself for that. And you want know, one of the first steps for that for me is just learning to, uh, not learning to, but to being more effective at apologizing. Like in the moment, if I'm overtly not showing that grace, like, hey, I'm sorry. You know, that's not the that's not the version of myself I, I wish you would have seen in this moment. So I'm sorry. You know, let's rewind that and and go again. Man, I just love that 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 last piece is just so so profound, right? Being able to being able to apologize and 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 know that that we've made that that mistake. And I think back to earlier in my career, is you know leading teams and that. And I can think of you know there was a time in my life where I wouldn't have admitted that I had made a mistake. That would just be, mm -hmm. forget it. You just don't do that. Leaders don't do that. But what I recognize mm -hmm. that when I started to actually take responsibility for my actions and my words, that life started to change for not just for me, but for them, they, they, people actually start to trust you more because they see that mm -hmm. you recognize 
the vulnerability and the pieces, the parts of you that aren't perfect and that you're willing to step into that and do something different. And I think that's a, such a great way that you've explained yeah. that. Well said, well said. So let's talk a little bit about your Unravel Groups piece here. So what is it all about? And you talked a little bit about how we start, how you're starting it, how you've started it, but let's get into Unravel Groups and what its purpose and mission is. Yeah, I don't know if this has been your experience over time, but it's certainly been mine and a lot of people I know that generally speaking, there's this acceptance uh, of mediocrity in the marketplace and in the per- people's personal life as well. So that's really been a theme I've noticed over the years with men, including myself at times. It's challenging, you know, to constantly be looking to grow. So this idea of the pursuit of excellence has become something that's really been important to me over time. So Unravel was founded to lead men in that regard and in the pursuit of excellence. That's really what it's about. Leadership as well, of course, but the pursuit of excellence. That's really what the focus of Unravel is, and every man feels stuck in some area of his life. I mean, I don't care how successful he is. I don't care how unsuccessful he is. Everyone is stuck in some area. So everyone can benefit from, from, from growing in this area of excellence and leadership. And the word Unravel came about because we feel like, first, you have to go through this process of disintegration before you can go through the process of integration. So it's unraveling all of this, this stuff in our lives that, of course, is a lifelong journey. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not conquered in overnight. But unraveling all of this stuff in our lives in whatever area it is, whether it's faith, family, friends, fitness, finances, whatever it is, unraveling that and then learning new tools to move the ball forward and grow in that area. So we have multiple environments to unravel, but Unravel One, which is our core and kind of founding environment, it's a 12 month environment, 12 month small group environment where men in community learn to pursue excellence together. So that's Unravel One. We've got Unravel Go, which is a self paced, you know, six week or six session environment, if you, if you will, for men to sort of have an easier on ramp to Unravel One. And then we actually have Unravel 2 for men that have finished Unravel 1. That's a six-month focus on leadership. And then lastly, Alan, is to move to Unravel 3. Our hope for every man is they would move into an Unravel 3 group that's for life, where they're doing doing life with men who are about the same things that they are. And what a great structure. I just love that. It's taking copious notes, and I really like how how you've split that up. And I think there's so much power in groups. And that we get an opportunity to, and I think that's how we learn as men, how to be men when we can be in groups and see it being, see it being, you know, manifested or produced in front of us that we can see what it it looks like. Oh, is that's what it looks like for someone to be, to be vulnerable, man, that guy had so much courage to, to do that. And, and you feel that and you start to feel the things that we've been we've been suppressing and we don't, and that we've been fighting against. And I think the power of what you've done here with these groups and leading them through these different spots, I just think what a great format that you've developed. Yeah. And it's, it's, we really believe, and this is probably in your experience too, that sustained growth, it's very hard to do it by yourself, you know, doing it in a group, it's much easier to scale it, to sustain it over time because you have men around you that are on the same journey. It's like running a marathon you know, to go out and do it by yourself, if you've never done it before, it's kind of hard, but if you do it with a friend or a group, it's a much easier experience. And, and it's more gratifying to, to be on the journey, to complete parts of the journey with other men who are doing it with you. Yeah, I think that with how does the saying go? If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with bring others. And I think yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly right. Love it. So how have you, this, this is obviously some a passion for you and your work now. What are you starting to see? What's a transformation you're starting to see in men in in men in your in your circle, but also in the circles that they're in their communities? How is that transforming their lives? It's so exciting, Ellen, to get the testimonials and you know emails and et cetera, et cetera, from men who have been through it, and the life has changed from their spouses, their friends. It's just it's so so exciting to see it happen. I would say here are the biggest outcomes that we see from men. First, a God-given vision. Men leave unravel with a God-given vision. And when you have a vision suddenly for your future of your life, it gets more exciting. 
You know, it gets it, it really becomes something you're looking forward to to waking up every day to to participate in. Secondly, is a a practical framework for moving the vision forward. So it's not enough just to have a vision; you have a framework for moving the vision forward. Then a third a third thing is a mission statement that kind of comes out of that, like a calibrating, governing, directing statement that 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 every day, every week, every month you can filter your activities through, you know, to see and, and calibrate your your mission and your vision as it relates to your activities. And I just love that. One of the things that we do here at the Awaken Man in our in our groups is the very first uh, module that they do, I call it Return of the King. And what it's all about is taking them through a process of ultimately crafting a life mission vision statement for themselves. And so we look at ca- taking down barriers of their limiting beliefs, how their values are, are either serving them or not serving them. Are they truly living that? And I, it sounds like we have some similar ideas. I think from our experiences, I think what we find is that when we're out of alignment and we don't have that thing, that idea, that something to connect to, that we tend to struggle as men. Is that what you're finding as well in your work and your life? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's so true. We're just, it's easy to just float around and kind of live in status quo on a daily basis and not really be about something bigger. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the, you talked about, you know, accepting mediocrity. And I can remember years ago, a business mentor of mine, you know, said, you know, beware, his famous quote was always beware the lollipop of mediocrity, one lick and you suck forever. And how often do we yeah. have a lollipop, right? Right. Yeah, that's right. And the lollipop tastes good until it doesn't. Yeah, because it's simple. And it's and we we may not we may not want to be in that pain. We have we're, we have this fear, this fear that is preventing us from moving forward. And so I want to talk a little bit about that now as well. And what are you finding in your men's work and your in unravel? What are the fears that are holding men back from living the lives that they that they truly desire? Yeah, I, I think a big one is just simply fear of failure. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's a struggle all men have, the fear of failure. How am I going to look to the people around me, my loved ones, my friends, if I fail? you know, if I'm not able to really succeed at this endeavor. So to put yourself out there and say, I'm going to craft a vision, I'm going to be about that on a regular basis. Suddenly, now people have a standard, if you will, to hold you to. And if you don't meet it, which you won't meet it perfectly every time, no one does. But when you don't meet it, it, feel, it doesn't feel good. And in fact, that's something that we talk to guys about when they're starting Unravel is, Look, one of the first things you're going to feel is shame because you're, as you become aware of your possibilities and the opportunities you have, and then you become aware of how far away you are from those, the first thing you're going to do is feel shame, which is, okay, I'm not good enough to do this. And we right out of the blocks want guys to know, hey, that's not the case at all. We're going to take one step at a time, right, on the journey, this year-long journey together. And you'll see when you look back, wow, the progress I made was incredible. So, so I think the shame, you know, the fear of failure, I think are the biggest things that hold hold men back in, in, in reaching and pursuing and driving themselves forward. Oh, yeah, I, I completely agree. When you when you mentioned the word shame, it just just hit me like a ton of bricks as I just think about my personal journey and starting and working through through my things and then starting doing doing men's work and that piece of shame for us to overcome as can be such a heavy burden. And, and when we get an opportunity to be in groups where leaders such as yourself and myself are helping men understand how that, that, that that's okay to feel that. And that it's not a, we're not going to climb the mountain yeah. in one step. It's going to take time and we're here for support and we have the tools. So I know for me, I'm not a, I'm not a, a book therapist. I'm not my, my ex- life experience is what's led me. Yes. I've done some training and I've, and I've done some things to help round out my skin to be able to lead men. So tell me a little bit about you. If you were to say, if I was to ask you, you know, what qualifies you to lead men today? What would you say to that? We get that question in a lot of different, you know, formats and different ways from all kinds of different people and in, in, in circumstances, in different contexts and circumstances. And, you know, the short answer to that is I'm a man who has lived life and experienced life just like you have and every other man has. My experiences aren't, I mean, of, of course, they feel unique to me, 
the reality is the, the labels on those experiences are there's a, there's not that many and all men have them. So what qualifies me is a man who has encountered, encountered them and has a passion for talking about them and a passion for equipping men to make progress in those. That's it. We didn't, it's not like we created some secret formula or it's not like we, you know, created some special format or curriculum or, or book or curriculum. All we've done is take from great thinkers, great theologians, great writers, great speakers, and we've curated that content into an environment that meets men in every key area of their life. Yeah, I just love that. And I think that what's really important about what, what you're saying there is that you're, you've taken tools and aspects of life experience and other things that are out there and made to, and made this format. And I think earlier you started to talk, rattle off a few, I'll, I'll call them, they're probably your, your, your powerful F's, you know, family, faith, mm-hmm. finance, tell, tell us a little mm-hmm. bit more about that. Is that really part of the structure uh, of, of what you're doing with men? Is that how you help them really understand their life? Yeah. We feel like that everything can be broken down into those five categories in one way or another, you know, some you got to stretch a little bit to get them in one of those, those labels. But, and we feel like first faith is the wrapping, the, 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 the container for everything. So that's not really a separate category as much as it is the wrapping or the container that everything else sits within. And, but yes, the faith, family, friends, fitness, finances, everything in unravel is going to touch on those areas and equip men with practical tools to make progress in their growth in those areas. That's the word growth that we really try to get men to get excited about, not perfection. So our phrase is progress, not perfection. Perfection is not gonna happen. It's never going to happen, but progress can happen every day of your life. And so we're, we're gonna give men tools in all of those areas to make progress and then empower them to recognize that they can make sustaining in scalable progress over time. Right on. Just love that as well. Like, and I like that you're using the, the, uh, the overall encompassing of our faith. Cause I truly believe that until we recognize that there, that, that we cannot do this alone. And even in the group of right. other men that we're, and we're working together as men, we still need something much, much more powerful. We need more, something more guiding for us. And whether or not I refer to that, to that as God, others refer it in different, in different ways. The point being is that once we recognize that we have that connection, that life for us seems to be much easier. And I don't know if you find that to be the same in your work, in your work. In your yes. And, yes. And that's one of our values. I mean, in fact, that's part of our overall you know, mission is we want people to grow in their relationship with God. We, we want that to be a part. It's a part of it. And how that, what that looks like for them and, and to, the, to the, the depth that it happens varies, of course, but we feel like that's a crucial piece. The crucial piece is to growing in that relationship, which then leads you into making progress in the areas of your life that you need to make progress in. Yeah, right on. I just want to go a little bit different to a different spot here. Let me, let me ask you, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given and how has it served you? You know, it's an interesting question. The best piece of advice, well, there's been so much, you know, (laughs) again, at 61, I'll look back and go, wow, I've, I've been blessed with so many people investing in my life and giving me wise advice. So, you know, what comes to mind, interesting enough was, came about when one of my close friends and I were water skiing one day and he and I would go water skiing a lot of early Saturday mornings and we would talk about life and and how we orient toward life and we sort of came up with this phrase as we were riffing a little bit and and just kind of having a fun time talking about life and the phrase is you can have almost anything you want but you can't have everything you want. You can have almost anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. And of course, that phrase was a a byproduct of tons of great advice I've gotten over the years. And it was just kind of our way of repackaging all this wonderful advice we've gotten into this simple statement that is applicable in your faith. I mean, excuse me, in your, your personal life and your vocational life. You can have almost anything, but you can't have everything in your life. So it, it, we, we were really talking about it more from an economic standpoint, like 
possessions and material and growth and financial desires that you can pretty much have pretty much anything you want, right? But you can't have everything. So if your, your, your economic life is about choices, but more importantly, about trade-offs. If I want this, I can't have that. And there's health, there's value in making those trade-offs and developing that muscle. The same thing applies in your personal life. You know, you can't spend 100% of your time with one aspect of your personal life or the other aspects of it are going to suffer. So it's, what are those trade-offs? What am I intentionally trading off for so that I can make progress in the area of my life or the areas of my life that matter? And I find it to be just so helpful in so many areas of, of my life is that it's just looking at that. I can have almost anything I want but I can't have everything you want. And by the way, it's not good to try to have everything you want. It's not healthy. Yeah, absolutely not. That's what leads to things like obsession, addictions, and other things start to come out when when that when we go right. on that path. And what I like what you're saw what piece of advice is that what you're what you're really saying is for us to live consciously. That's my takeaway from it. Yes. Consciously. I can yes. have anything that I want. And now it's about choices and trade-offs and decisions. And then that to me then leads to now you're really, what you're really asking men to do then is to, what do you truly value? And is this decision, mm-hmm. this choice worth the trade-off that I'm going to make? So right. what profound information, you know, a piece that yeah. you've just given us. I just love that, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, it's been very helpful for me and over time, and it just applies in so many different circumstances. Your most basic of, financial choices all the way up to complex personal relationships in your life. And so it's it's very helpful. Absolutely. So what what encouragement would you give, uh, would you give to other men about who are maybe stuck in their life and they're thinking about wanting to make a change? What would you say to that, to that guy listening right now? Yeah, I, I would say, imagine yourself 10 years from now and you look back on the last 10 years of your life and, and, and look at these, these five areas of your life, the faith, family, friends, fitness, finances, and ask yourself, if nothing changes over the next 10 years, how am I going to feel about that 10 years from now, right? And, and the vast majority of people are, are, are going to say to themselves, I'm not going to feel very good about it. Well, if that's the case, then, then you got to ask yourself the second question, what are you going to do differently? Because if you don't do something differently, then what you're doing now, you are going to keep getting what you're getting in that area of your life. So you got to do something different, pursue progress. And that's the only thing that's going to make a difference for you is, is committing to that growth in your life. Otherwise status quo mediocrity, as you've already touched on, it's just, it's too easy. It's too simple and it tastes too good and it feels too good in the moment to move out of it. Absolutely. Geez. I just love that. What a great, what a, what a great way to put that together. You know, of everything that we spoke about today, Mark, and maybe there was something we didn't get a chance to touch on. So this is your opportunity to leave our mess, our listeners with what's the one takeaway message you want to make sure they get from our conversation today. I, I think I just love coming back to this idea of pursuing progress and, and then coupling that with courage to meet the demands of reality. That's integrity. So to be a man who lives in reality and says, okay, here's my reality in these areas of my life. Oh, I see that that's not where I need to be, where I want to be, where God's called me to be. Now I'm going to demonstrate courage. I'm going to lead myself courageously. I'm going to lead people around me courageously, and I'm going to make progress in those areas. And of course, we believe Unravel is a great tool, a great environment to affect that change that that men need. And just love that. What a great way to, to wrap our conversation up today. I just want to say once again, thank you so much, Mark, for spending time with me today. And the work you're doing with Unravel is just so needed. We need men's groups. We need different perspectives on how we go and shape and help men, you know, guide them through to the, that next phase of their life. So if they're interested, if there's a guy listening today is interested, in wanting to get involved with your program, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? The best way is to go to unravelgroups.com. At unravelgroups.com, it's everything they can need. Join a group, get some of the self-paced material that we have, get exposed to some content. We've got an incredible blog that has very practical, helpful content for making progress in your life. So yeah, unravelgroups.com, you can get exposed to all of our social media links there and get plugged into that uh, as well. 
Absolutely. I'm going to make sure all that information is in the show notes, including your, your social media and folks can get a chance to reach out to you. I want to say once again, thank you so much for being on the show. Love the conversation today. Thank you so much, Alan. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I enjoyed it, man. Thank you for listening to the Revolutionary Man podcast. Are you ready to own your destiny? To become more the man you are destined to be? Join the brotherhood that is the Awakened Man at theawakenedman.net and start forging a new destiny today.